it's a it's a group effort. I mean, what Coach Pantone and his staff does in this building is uh, tremendous. Uh, you know, I think obviously with the help I get in the room uh, with uh, Coach Keenan Bailey is just phenomenal. And uh, again, the list goes on. I mean, it's not just a two-person operation, not a three-person operation. It's a whole program operation. And and again, it's not it's, it's a lot about what we do, but it's more about them. You know, I mean, they are the right guys and. And uh, again, people make comments about you going kind of out there to get this guy, going over there to get that guy. It's, I really feel like the guys bring us to them. You know, we, we're a good fit. Uh, I like the family environment. They're great players. And, and they have the right makeup, you know, between the years. And that's the biggest thing I like to look for. Uh, you know, I think that unleashes what any ability you have um, is all predicated on, you know, what you have between the years. And all these guys are great young men. And, and I think they have that makeup. With the, with the guys that you're losing, how much urgency is there now to transition from the recruiting phase to get them ready to potentially help next year? Yeah, really important. I mean, that's how they'd want it too. So, but like you, like you commented on, I mean, having you know seven guys leave in two years. I mean, that's a that's a large uptake, you know, on taking. And I think that uh, you know, with that, there's a lot of responsibility, uh, both from the guys that are having opportunities currently in the room and the guys coming in. So. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities all over the world and all over, all over the place, I'm sorry. And uh, um, I think our receiver room is definitely one of them. Uh, but again, uh, all of this stuff is on potential. These guys have the makeup. They want to come in and compete. And I know they're going to do that. And I think that we're going to provide them with, with as many resources as possible to be successful. Uh, but again, this is just kind of like a checkpoint. You know, it's like it's like Mario Kart. You know, you got the race started good. You know, we hit the first checkpoint just to get to the next checkpoint. So we'll keep pushing. Uh, but this is just the beginning. Um, third row left, Dan Hope. Brian, of the four guys you brought in today, which positions do you see each of them fitting into this offense at? You know, you kind of you kind of want to play that, you know, where will each guy play. You know, I've talked to them about that. Uh, but you know, we really like guys that are very versatile, you know, and can play different different things. And I think that, you know, I, I think of like a Mookie Cooper, I think that he is definitely a guy that can play in that slot and be very dynamic. So it's probably where he'll be. The other three guys, I think they're very flexible. I think they can kind of all move around, and, and we'll kind of see how it all plays out. You know, I kind of have a game plan in my head, but I kind of want to leave it there, and uh, and we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Again, a lot of that's uh, based on the current guys and how they're doing, and, and you know, how do we uh, complement what they do and with what these guys may do. And, and again, in the end, there's a lot of work to be put in, and these guys got to learn an offense, and they got to come in and compete, and, and really, uh, earn the respect of their peers before the rest of it any uh, kind of takes off. Because of KJ leaving and him being the only guy who's really played in the slot this year, do you have to look at whether it's current guys or guys coming in, possibly moving a couple of those guys into the slot to potentially take that role? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that anything on the table. In the end, you always want your best players on the field. And uh, we'll take a hard look at that uh, as an offense and see where maybe each guy would be most successful. But understand, like, Austin Mack is a great example of a guy that played all three positions. Uh, played one position, frankly, his entire career, and then in this last part of his career, his last season, he played the other two. So um, I don't ever like putting handcuffs on anybody and kind of putting them in a box and, and telling them they only play one position. I feel like these guys that come in here, they're great receivers, they can play any spot, you know, on that uh, um, on the offense. So uh, we'll adjust week to week, we'll adjust year to year, whatever it takes. So definitely take a good look at that. For real, Nathan. Obviously, there's some Ohio State receivers doing pretty well in the NFL right now. Michael Thomas leading that. How much do you use that kind of in real time with the guys that you're recruiting either this class or guys still out there? I think the biggest thing with that is a lot of guys really aren't fans of teams anymore. It's more of players. And obviously, Mike is the best in the NFL. And uh, a lot of the guys that uh, like Ohio State are even coming here uh, like Mike Thomas. So. To have that conversation about him being around and 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 talk about you know communication we've had uh, is always good, but I don't honestly over oversell anything like that. I think that it's a track record. I don't think it's just you know Mike. I think it's before Mike. You know from the Chris Carter's on. And I think a lot of that has to do with the competition we have to practice and the consistency with that. Uh, but um, obviously it's a conversation. It's always a good talking piece, and especially when uh, the best one in the NFL is one of your own. Uh, it's a pretty easy conversation. So. Definitely helps, but I wouldn't say I overkill that. By any means. Right behind, Ari. Hey, Brian. Um, Jackson Smith and Chick was um, a little bit late to the party in terms of getting up here in the recruiting rankings, and you were on him like more than a year ago. What did you see from him early on that made you 
love him so much and you know how far in advance into the future are you breaking down for, for guys like that who are out of state so you know, I can be one of the first on the scene there? Yeah, I think Jax, uh, there's kind of a, a lot of things in play. Uh, one, again, Mark Pantone and his staff have done a great job helping identify guys and, hey, coach, take a look at this guy. And, and then really it started from there, right? And then once you start talking to a young man, um, you know, it's – hey, I don't want to use the say it the wrong way, but – you find a guy that has the right mental makeup and you're like, okay, well, what can he do athletically? It's like, well, everything. It's like, okay, so what can he do at some point? You know, you kind of get to that conversation almost like a scout, I think. And then, you know, again, I, we started talking to the young man and his family and how great they were. And, and uh, you know, they, they came to uh, some games early on, so that relationship started to form. You know, in the end, again, when you guys, when we talk about guys, it's just about, hey, this is an opportunity we think you're a really good player. We'd love for you to be here. And then you kind of take it from there. I mean, it wasn't like we're necessarily mad scientists. He's done a phenomenal job, and his head coach has done a phenomenal job. And, and Rockwall, the uh, uh, the program down there is amazing. I think it mimics a lot of what we do here. And, and uh, I think that, again, um, it's kind of hard to say, oh, you know, he kind of took off and all the ratings things and all that. In the end, you know, he's a really good football player. He had a great mental makeup. We fell in love with the family. They fell in love with us, and it was really—he was our first commit. So, uh, in the receiver room, I think it was just a match made that was supposed to happen. Uh, we're glad it worked out the way it did. He's developed into a great player, and now he's taking another step once he gets here. But uh, I'm just really proud of him as a person and all of the turmoil he kind of had being down there and and then leaving that state and coming up here and the local schools. And there's a lot that went into that. And I think that you know their loyalty and how. Great, they've been through the whole process. It just uh, epitomizes the whole entire uh, recruiting process. And I, again, I can't say enough about them. Uh, but uh, you know, he's doing a great job. We thought he might, but again, he's developed so well, and I can't wait for him to be here. Ryan, when you look at the receivers you're bringing in, you got guys from all over the country, right? When you go into a place to recruit somebody who lives in Texas, I'm assuming part of the discussion and the thought process is how hard is it going to get be to get this guy out of the state. Were you surprised at all at the beginning of your recruitment about how little Texas was in on it at the time? Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, we just kind of focus on our own. You know, we just focus on what, you know, how we want to communicate about our program. Don't really worry about the other programs. Uh, we put ourselves at a very high level and we hold ourselves there. And uh, in fact, we feel like there's only a couple of programs probably in the country that we, we kind of rival, you know, and we're proud of that. We're not, you know, boasting. So we really wasn't, worried, we weren't overly worried about uh, who's in the area, who else maybe is recruiting you. It's more like, hey, when we get there, we'll have that conversation. But right now, this is, this is Ohio State. This is what we have to offer. And we kind of just took it from there. I didn't really, we didn't really think about, you know, how hard or what's the, any of that. We just kind of played it by ear. And again, in the end, uh, we want to go after some of the best, both young men and uh, players in the country. We expect, you know, to be competing against some of the best programs. So um, no, no real thought to it, but kind of expected. Let's go to the left, Bill. Yep. This was your uh, first cycle with Ryan as the head coach. How did he handle the whole thing? I mean, it's, it's a lot for one person to, to go through. What were your impressions of how he did in his first full cycle? Oh, Coach Day is awesome. I mean, it's, uh, he's a stud. I think that, you know, a guy that you know, we, we do a lot as, as position coaches, uh, but for a guy that you know can always come to. And, and if you really kind of get into, into an issue, you can bring it to him. He loves to help, love to help you out. And plus, the amount of communication he has with the uh, with the uh, young with the recruits is, uh, you know, paramount, huge, and you can tell he believes this program, he believes the uh, believes the culture, and he makes sure that it's not just uh, a bunch of position coaches recruiting these guys; he's recruiting them. Uh, so, to have a guy like that uh, to work with, uh, you're really on your own, and uh, I can't say enough about the uh, uh, availability he has when it comes to recruiting. Hey, can you just kind of give a, a brief thumbnail? Sketch or whatever uh, of their skill sets of, of your guys. Uh, sure. Uh, so we've got four receivers. Uh, start with uh, Jax. Jax is down in Texas. Uh, I think he's a guy that, um, again, going through a what you know, you always start kind of the, the negative, not to be the bad way, but maybe that's the NFL approach I kind of had. Is that you know what can he do? Where is his weaknesses? And he's just one of those guys that's really hard to maybe find. You know, I think that. Uh, you know, he runs really, he plays great competition, he runs great routes, he's pretty. He's a smart guy. He, uh, uh, I think he understands the offense. You don't really know until you get your hands on him. Uh, they, he feels really coachable. You know, again, there's a lot of unknowns at that part of it. 
but uh, he's a playmaker. Uh, he plays at a different speed. He's got a lot of good twitch. I think he tracks the ball really well. I think one thing you'll notice about these guys, they're all elite pass catchers. They really do well tracking the football, and I think that uh, that's paramount when it comes to receiver play, and Jax epitomizes that. Uh, I would say Mookie Cooper, Terion Cooper, uh, is uh, on St. Louis, from St. Louis. Uh, a smaller guy, but really stocky. You know, he'll, When he goes to block, he tries to knock you out. I mean, that's one of the biggest things I loved about him. Uh, he, uh, uh, you know, can, you know, some speed sweeps to plays down the field. Again, he does a lot. I think that, you know, again, just playing a little more running back maybe than receiver at times. Um, there might be a transition there. But overall, I think, again, sitting out his senior year will be more to find out. But I think he's got the skill sets through the, through the roof. He's very uh, twitched up, very quick. Uh, he's pretty straight line fast, too. And again, I think he tracks the ball really well. Uh, but he's going to you know, provide mismatches and, and I think that uh, I'm thrilled to be having him. He does he has a skill set maybe in our room that we don't have a ton of, and uh, it'll add to that. Uh, so those two guys, and you've got uh, G. Scott Jr. out from Seattle. Uh, he is a bigger body guy, and he's like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, runs pretty well, you know, like big and physical, again, a great blocker, uh, does a great job in the run game. I would say that he tracks the ball, he swallows the ball, he's got huge hands, and, and every time there's a high point, I feel like he goes and gets that ball. So. Uh, great jump ball guy. Again, really, I think pretty polished. You know, has a good, pretty good top ends. Uh, you know, one you'll, you know, tell you too. The one thing will be getting with Coach Mick and and, uh, and and working his tail off, seeing how fast he could potentially get. And, and at that point, I don't know. Again, I don't know what he can't do. You know, so he'll keep working on that. But it, again, I think he's a really smart player. But um, again, with all these guys, there's so much potential. Just like anywhere in college, you know, it's it's all about between the years. How can you handle adversity? How can you? Uh, you know, learn the offense, how fast you learn the offense. So that's that's all an unknown. Yeah. And lastly, Julian Fleming uh, from PA. Uh, you know, again, he's 6'2", runs really well, uh, really fast, ran track as well. Um, really great ball skills, very physical in the run game. You know, what's great about Julian is, is he runs in a, you know, kind of a, a wing T offense, a heavy run offense. So the expectations on targets should be pretty low. You know, so when he gets here, hopefully he's not like, hey, man, I need the ball. You know, because he didn't get it a whole lot in high school, too. So uh, with that being said, he get like three targets and be three touchdowns and whatever else. But so that's good. Uh, so I expect a, a great blocker. He sends me all his blocking film before he sends me any kind of catch. He loves it. So hopefully that will be brought here. Uh, but I think, you know, from a, a route running standpoint, he'd probably tell you that he hasn't had a lot of exposure to running routes and being, you know, exact and detailed on top ends and how to do all that. So the development as a receiver will happen. Uh, but again, these guys, what I can't speak enough about is, you know, how, uh, you know, coachable they, they come off and how, how of dire need they want to be great and how they talk about, you know, contributing to the room. And, and that's where, that's where I fall in love. And again, I think I, you know, fortunately so far, I haven't really got to know guys really deeply and then a guy not come per se. So, you know, I know one day that day is going to happen. It's going to crush me. I really, you know, dive into the relationships and I really enjoy coaching young men, whether it's here or other. I saw people from other schools that I recruited that didn't come here that still try to text me. I know I can't, but, you know, so I try to create great relationships with these guys and that's really my sole purpose. So uh, I think we've done that, you know, on a two-way road. So I can't wait to have these guys in the room and, and add to what we have here with some phenomenal talent already in the room. And uh, I can't say enough, though, again, about those kids, their parents, uh, how they were raised, and then what they want out of this program as much as anything else. So. Right next door, Tim. Yeah, Brian, playing off of that, you know, you're recognized nationally as one of the great recruiters out there right now. Uh, what is it that you like about it? Or, or I mean, and, and then has it come naturally almost to you? So this recruiting, like, recruiter, like, yeah term just rubs me like the wrong way all the time like I feel like you know to me again I'm just, you know it's not a business like these are like young men that just want to figure out where they want to go to school and they're trying to find a coach that they can relate to and their program they understand the culture and and that's all it is I mean what are we talking about like it's Ohio State like this is the best program in the country so all you just got to do is talk about it and I think if I talk about it, I could probably detail my drive into work every day when I see baseball field and I can see the track and I can see shots the over. I mean, it's this place is amazing. So I just try to communicate that as clearly as possible. I try, hopefully, you know, my passion comes through for why I like coaching and, and why I like, you know, the receiver play and the art form and how much I love it. But, you know, 
I guess, um, you know, it's Coach Pantone, it's Coach Day, it's all, it's, it's not, I mean, I'm just, I guess I get the, the headline, but I, I just, you know, I feel like the puppet, you know, so, you know, I, again, I don't know how to really answer that question, I don't, I don't, it's not a one-person job, there's a bunch of people that go involved in this, and let alone the parents, I mean, the parents, it's hard to recruit a young man if you can't come to your school, so the, the, the sacrifices they make to uh, have them come up here, and then the communication, and, and then the head coaches involved at different schools. There's so much that goes into it. It's just not one person. Now, uh, do I enjoy, do I enjoy re the recruiting tag? No, I do not. But what I do enjoy, I do enjoy going to find young men that want to be coached the position and try to reach an ultimate goal they've dreamt about since they were five years old. That's cool. That's cool. So um, obviously, you want to build a room that they complement each other and do different things, but. In the end, my job is to make sure they are surrounded by talent. I mean, coaching is great, and I agree with that. We make a large impact, but there's no better impact than peer-to-peer -peer impact. So this young man is only going to be as good as he has to be to play at Ohio State. And when he's starting, at what point are you getting pushed? I mean, yes, I can still keep barking at you, but when you see your peer maybe outworking you or doing this better or whatever else, it makes you better. And that's the biggest thing. That was the biggest impact. As San Antonio Holmes and Ted Ginn and, and so on and so forth all had an impact on me, Anthony Gonzalez, and they're all first rounders. So it's like that's the environment we're going to create along with the phenomenal culture with Coach Day. So all of the four of these young men, uh, you know, relish in that, love that. We have two quarterbacks. I mean, that's unheard of that want to, you know, are willing to compete. I feel the same way about the receivers. These are phenomenal receivers that could go anywhere else in the country and probably be, you know, maybe their guy or whatever. But in the end, they want to be together. They want to learn together. They want to push each other. And that's just phenomenal. So when you're when you're on the trail, are you are you looking for three, four different kinds of receivers now? I mean, you're you know you're the wide receivers coach, but there's three or four positions in there when you when you look at it. I mean, I mean how do you do you try to fill a quota every? Uh, yes and no. I mean, there's always a numbers game, you know, and there's always a who could leave game and maybe maybe a skill set a little bit. Like I said, though, I like guys that can basically do everything, right? And I think that. Um, and Coach Day and everyone kind of agree, you know, we have the same conversations. And, uh, but quota, I mean, what, it's based on, you know, scholarships and who might leave and who might not and, and all those things. So uh, it's kind of complex, but however many are kind of leaving is usually how many you're trying to bring in. So you're kind of handicapped sometimes. And, but uh, in the end, you know, I like to make sure that um, I'm also meeting up great young men that are great, you know, DBs that affects my room. And I want to bring great young guys like that in. And so it's not just always receivers. And one other quickie. K.J. Hill, what is his legacy beyond the record, beyond the possible next record he's going to set uh, next week? But what's his legacy to this room? You know, I think it's it's really unselfish. You know, again, he's a guy that could have left early. He came back, um, and he was a staple. I mean, if you pull K.J. Hill out of our room, we are not as talented in that room. And that says a lot about him. That says a lot about his family. That says a lot about the belief he had in Coach Day and, and the uh, program and where it was going. Uh, went through a head coaching transition and he's just steadfast and he was ready to rock. And so it says a lot, uh, you know, the plays he's made throughout his career are phenomenal, but I think his biggest legacy hopefully will be how the young guys turn out. You know, the, the guys that you leave behind and how you leave the room is your true legacy. You know, so the impact that Terry McLaurin and Paris Campbell and Johnny Dixon had is being shown right now. And then, you know, how these young guys now progress both as individuals and as football players, that's KJ's legacy. That's Austin Mack's legacy. So. Uh, that's Ben Dick's legacy. That's C.J. Sumner's legacy. So, again, four guys are leaving. Four guys are going to need to step up. And uh, it'll be really interesting to see these guys progress uh, come next year with these guys gone. And, and they have a great platform, like we talked about. They have four guys coming in that are going to be here in January that don't know right from wrong. So it's really hard to see, uh, you know, what maybe Paris Campbell or Terry uh, McLaurin or uh, Johnny Dixon did when you have them in the room with them. So they're going to see what you do. Now, are you going to carry what KJ and how they practice in Austin and Ben and CJ, or are you going to create a new standard that uh, makes it a lot more difficult to hold? So that'll be the legacy uh, of KJ and the rest of the guys. Right behind him, Tony? Brian, a couple times this year I checked Twitter on a Friday night and see Jackson with like 200 yards receiving and five touchdowns in the first half. Uh, when you see that, like what goes through your mind? First, I laugh. And I'm like, gosh, I wanted like two catches when I was in high school. <laughs> Secondly, uh, you know, goes through my mind. I'm like, dang, he's pretty good. That's probably second. And then I always make sure they won, right? So that's the next one. But, uh, you know, I guess uh, pretty profound. I mean, the, the, the career he's had in Texas, I mean, that's a great football state, call spade a spade, you know? And, 
And uh, for him to be amongst the best, you know, of all time is just astounding, you know. And I think that, uh, you know, it, another thing that jumps off too is on his Twitter, you see how good of a teammate he is. You know, he does always talk about his own line and people around him, and, and that's really who he is. He radiates that, which is phenomenal, you know. And I think that's awesome. But no, he's a really good, very productive player. And then, and then inverse of Julian, I'm like, oh man, he's never going to see that many catches here in one game. You know, so it's like, I hope he can lower his standards. You know, no, I'm kidding. But like, in the end, uh, you know, it's just, it's just great to see the guys have success. You know, I mean, in the end, when you're a young athlete and you start getting talked about a lot and the, the, the pressures these guys deal with that most guys didn't have to deal with 10 years ago and never to deal with, the access these uh, adults and other kids have to these athletes before they're probably even ready. You know, it, frankly, these young men, are probably more versed with Twitter or social media than their parents. Their parents can't even comprehend what's going on and, and how to handle it and how to tweet the right way and, and how to have a message. So to see him carry himself the right way, that's the most impressive. And I would say that, you know, in the end, um, you know, the, the stats are what they are. When he has opportunity, he makes plays. But really, as a person, that's really what astounds me and how he's able to, you know, go through the hoops there uh, with that and handle that the right way. So um, can't say enough about him and his family and how he's been raised. A couple more, uh, front row left, Doug. You guys have had unbelievable success with Harris and KJ in the slot in your time here. But there's some smaller slot guys in the Big Ten, Rondale Moore and KJ Hamler and guys like that. With Mookie, did, like, were you interested in that? Are you talked a little bit about a different skill set a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, he's just a smaller slot guy. Were, were you intrigued of bringing in a guy like that? No, I wouldn't say. I, where's my short guy at? I wasn't. I wasn't. Was, I yeah. love the short guy. Yeah, I wasn't doing that. But you know, to me, you know, I'm I'm big on you know. To me, I always think like well, I don't care. Like so, he's, his eyes are this height versus that height. Like I don't know if that changes. It's more about like your range of your catch range. Like are you supposed to get off the ground? It doesn't matter if you're five eleven. If you can jump out of the gym, then it doesn't matter if I was six four and can't jump. So, uh, to me, I think that. You do want different guys with skill sets. You're looking for guys that are explosive. Looking for guys again culturally they fit here first, you know, and and then you go about, uh, um, you know, maybe if you do do a speed sweep, you know, some guys are maybe built more for that. Maybe he has a little more running back background, so it's better for him to carry the, the football. And and how physical is he? Is he willing to block? There's a lot more that goes into it than just, you know, I want to look alike. That's not that's not it at all. It's just uh, skill set different, you know. And I think that you know his return uh, capabilities are phenomenal. So. There's just more of a skill set than it is height and weight and everything else too. But with that being said, I mean, you know, if you're going to be, you know, five ten in our opinion in our offense, you got to go to block. So you'd be 170 pounds. That doesn't usually work out right, you know, because it's hard to go walk, you know, be in the slot and block a walkout backer, you know, in the run game. But then also you want to catch a go ball. Like they have to marry up. But frankly, we ask these guys to do a lot of things, but you got to do it both. You can't just sub for a pass play and then on a run play we put someone else in there. So you got to make sure that. Uh, again, that's a lot of it through the years, you know, between the years. Does he have the mindset to go in there and block a, a sandbacker? And then is he fast enough to go catch a ball? That skill set's pretty hard to find, believe it or not. And we've done a pretty darn good job of finding it over the years. And we got to continue to do that, but that's a, that's a rare, rare skill set. What's the situation with him when you have a guy like that who, who has a situation like Mookie did this year? Mm -hmm. How do you talk to him during the season? Because you don't. Yeah, I think it's and what do you have to coach him up on? It's, it's a little different because he wasn't injured, but I mean, you've had injured guys come back, you know. And I think that you know, if anything, he's taking less hits on the body. He's even fresher, so I'm good. Uh, but you know, for Mook, it was hard for him because football is his life, and uh, he's always done it since he was young. Had to change school, so there's a lot of transition there. New friends, new. So there was a lot of communication there helping him and, uh, and and talking with mom and everybody too. But again, he's a fighter. He's tough and. Uh, he uh, you know, it, it was there bad days, of, sh uh, of course, but I think that in the end, uh, communication was excellent, and uh, uh, he's a stud. <coughs> he's got a lot to learn, and he's continuing to grow up. But he's 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 awesome. So. And last question is uh, to the <coughs> um, with as young as you are, and as successful as you've been, if I were a receiver coming into this program, I would wonder when you would get a chance to be more than a position coach. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that is something that comes up in recruiting your personal future and, and how you address it if it does. Uh, yeah, I address it. I think that, you know, for me, uh, college football is a crazy, crazy world. And uh, it's only getting crazier. I think that, you know, it all comes back down to purpose. 
in my opinion, and nothing on any one of their coaches out there. You know, I have a strong uh, passion for Ohio State. Uh, two, from two hours from here, my wife's from Columbus. Uh, her family's here. My, you know, my family's only two hours away. I think that uh, I have friends that are all here from high school that live here. It, it's. I'm very passionate about Ohio State. I think you know at this point it's really early. I don't want to sound ignorant to the fact, but. You know, it's, it's, I don't know what would get me out of the city, frankly, unless I'm just not good. So um, hopefully I can control that and keep getting better. You know, But I think that my passion it lies in this receiver room. I love coaching the wide receivers. And there's a lot of coaches that say they'll never leave. And uh, you know, I, never is a long time. But again, being honest real, realistically, I just don't, I don't see a situation where you know, you know, hopefully I'm out of here anytime soon. Hopefully I'm here for a long time. Again, I've earned it year in and year out. It's not given to anybody. But uh, uh, I have, I, right currently, I have no uh, desire to, to go there or go here or do it. I just don't. I love being here. I love talking to you guys. And uh, it's very natural and easy to just, you know, shoot it from the heart and not. So I prefer to live in that world. And I'll, you know, be here as long as hopefully they'll have me. So. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Yep. Thanks. <clears throat>